So next, we're gonna talk about a series of plots focused on POA control in dormant Bermuda grass. The site that we're at is Tiffway hybrid Bermuda grass. It's obviously dormant. You can see the brown canopy throughout uh, the site today. The POA plants are gonna be our uh, green clumped grasses throughout these plots. I should note that all of the trial work that we do at the University of Tennessee is replicated. So everything here is gonna be a four replication trial for the purposes of today's video, what we've done is if we've highlighted a single one of those four replications to help you kind of key in on treatment to treatment comparisons. The first plot that I'm standing in, so this is a non-treated check plot. Uh, you can see plenty of POA pressure here. We have this dormant canopy of, of hybrid Bermuda grass. There's no plant competition. There's ample POA seed in the soil. Uh, and without that plant competition, we have an opportunity uh, for that seed to germinate uh, and really become established. We know from previous work that POA seed germination in soil happens in the fall when we have seven day uh, soil temperatures averaging 66 or cooler at a two inch depth. And we have some moisture from rainfall uh, within that same seven day window. If we can check those two benchmarks, we'll see POA seeds start to germinate uh, and emerge uh, in a Bermuda grass stand. In Tennessee, uh, in 2024, that event really happened in, in the middle of October. Once Hurricane Helene went through uh, in late September, we had plenty of moisture in the soil. And then as soon as our temperatures cooled, we started to see POA emergence uh, in mid-October. And we use that 66 temperature as a guide uh, for how to really structure programs, whether they're with pre-emergence chemistry or with post-emergence chemistry. In the trial we're going to focus on, we're going to look at different programs for POA control to essentially go from early September all the way now into March and April as POA free as we can. We know in a world where we have resistant populations, we want to do everything we can to keep those plants from emerging because a lot of our resistance issues are to post-emergence products. So the plots that we'll walk through today are really designed to do that, to do the best uh, the best as possible to keep these plants in the ground uh, and from emerging. So the next plot, this is really simple. This is an industry standard, has been so for a long time. This is a single application of barricade. Active ingredient in barricade is prodiamine. It's a group three herbicide. This was applied in September. So this application was made on September 11th, a true pre-application. So we're roughly a month before uh, we hit the trigger conditions for POA emergence uh, from the soil. And you can see here the control relative to our non-treated is fairly good, but it's not perfect. There's plenty of POA plants kind of scattered throughout. That single application uh, has been very helpful, created a solid foundation, but not enough to go from September through the spring of the following year as POA free as, as possible. And in the event that any of these plants were resistant, we would have some issues now trying to remove them in the springtime. So the next plot that we'll look at kind of builds on that same concept. You know, one of the things for Tennessee that UT Extension we like to promote is you're out and you're gonna make an application every 90 days or maybe even sooner than 90 days in some geographies. So if you were say uh, south of Tennessee uh, in a different part of the Southeast region, based on your weather patterns, you might need to make applications on 60 day intervals or even shorter. But for Knoxville, a 90 day interval works best. Here, we have an application of barricade on September 11th. We've come back 90 days later now in December and we have have a mixture of barricade with princep and negate. So we've got three modes of action for that second treatment. Uh, not only are we have different modes of action, we have pre-chemistry mixed with post-chemistry. Anything that might have broken through that early barricade treatment, the princep and the negate could help control. And then we're introducing additional barricade residual in the soil by having that as a component in our mixture. And you can see here, if you look at the, this plot compared to the one we 
just left, uh, a market increase in control from having two applications now uh, into our program rather than just the single barricade alone. So the next plot that we'll look at is gonna kind of build on that concept. This is really kind of the full program. So we have our September application of barricade. We're coming back 90 days later, making an application of barricade, princip and negate as we've talked about. And now we're following that up 90 days later with a February application of StayGuard, right? And what that's done is it's introduced a different mode of action, a group 14 herbicide. StayGuard is sold on a granular carrier. It's gonna have activity on young seedling POA plants. So anything that may have emerged through the previous two treatments, you would think would be fairly small in February. It's also gonna introduce additional residual in the soil to give us protection against subsequent emergence from February through the springtime. Stay guard in totality, and we've talked about this in other videos, uh, not a really long residual product, probably somewhere in the 70 to 90 day range, but that's plenty for what we're asking it to do here, going from February through the rest of the springtime. And you can see that that plot uh, looks fairly clean. As a comparison, so the next plot here, this is just a stay guard application. So this shows you that the residual will, will run out. This is an application of stay guard. This was made in September, on September 11th, as just a standalone treatment. Our idea with this was everything you've seen so far in the video as that foundational application, the first thing you do in the year, had barricade. Barricade's a root inhibiting product. We've had several golf course superintendents contact UT Extension and say, can you help us build a program that doesn't have a root inhibitor? Well, StayGuard would check that box. This is a herbicide that doesn't inhibit the root growth of the Bermuda grass, uh, will help us on the POA control front, but it's not nearly the length of residual that a barricade would be. That this can give us again, probably in that 70 to 90 day window, and then it's gonna really play out. And we have certainly seen seen that here. The idea with the stay guard is let's have programs that don't inhibit the root growth of the Bermuda grass. This can be important, right? You think about, say you have a lot of winter play where you're at a golf course and you're running golf carts out, maybe 85, 100 rounds a day, that traffic's gonna really add up. And we have other research here at the university that'll illustrate that as part of a future video. Um, maybe you're in a situation where you have a lot, of, you're managing Bermuda grass on a sports field and you have a lot of traffic for from sporting events and use. Again, having something that doesn't inhibit root growth might be advantageous. This plot, this kind of builds on that stay guard foundation. So we have a stay guard application here in September, and then we're coming back on a 60 day interval now, and we're making an application of tower, princip, and negate. So we have three different modes of action. Tower's a group 15, Princeps a group five, Negate's a group two. So we have kind of that pre three concept that's popular in the industry. We've got pre-emergence chemistry in that mix and post-emergence chemistry. And again, we're putting this down 60 days after our stay guard application. And we have a, a marked jump in our overall control from doing that. One question you might have is why 60 days? Earlier, we looked at barricade plots and they were 90 days. Well, one of the things when we, when we get into herbicides that don't inhibit root growth, our longevity, our, our length of residual activity in soil tends to be a little shorter. So we have to tighten that interval, which is why we have to go from 90 days down into 60 days. So now we're gonna build on what we, we just saw with that stay guard program. Here, we have a stay guard application in September. We're coming back 60 days later with our tower, princip, simazine treatment. And then we're gonna come back 60 days after that in the middle of January with an application of SureGuard. SureGuard is the same active ingredient as stay guard but it is applied as a liquid. So we can apply that per label when the Bermuda grass is dormant. That's gonna help us control anything that may have broken through uh, the previous two applications that we've made, and then introduce again, some additional soil residual to give us protection uh, from January through the rest of the springtime. Next plot. 
This is the same concept, but we've kind of changed our foundation away from stay guard. We're starting the season with Strycor. So Strycor is a group 15 herbicide. Again, no root inhibition here. We make our application of Strycor September 11th, come back 60 days later with our same tower princept negate concept that we've had in all of these non-root pruning programs. And then we're following that up in January with that same SureGuard concept. And you can see, uh, again, the performance here is really high. And I think it's important to note, you know, for those that have questions about can I do it and not have a root inhibitor, you can do it, right? And these, these plots are good evidence. You can do it. The program's going to look different, though. It's going to look like more applications on tighter intervals. And then the final treatment here as a standard comparison, this would be a, a you could call it a Cadillac program, a, a, a Ritz-Carlton program. This is some of our more uh, high-priced herbicides in turf grass used in the same manner. So for this treatment, we have an application of Spectacle Flow at nine ounces per acre in September. We're coming back with Curb, Katana, and Princep. So three different modes of action, again, for that pre-post, uh, uh, pre three type mixture application um, 90 days later. And then we're following that up 90 days later in the springtime with an application of Ronstar Flow while the, the Bermuda grass is still dormant. That, and again, the results there are what one would expect from using those herbicides. So in summary, I hope you take from this video that there are a number of ways you can go about building out your programs for uh, pole control and non-overseeded Bermuda grass. In subsequent videos, we're gonna talk about different uh, different treatments that fit into these same timings, right? We, we tend to build our programs as we have a foundational pre that's early in the fall. We have an application that goes out kind of late fall, early winter, uh, and that's gonna have multiple modes of action in the tank. And then we're gonna have something that goes out early springtime to give us a full window of protection against POA coming into our Bermuda grass. To use kind of fungicide language, we never wanna get into the place where we're making a curative app when it comes to controlling POA in Bermuda. We always want to have things be in, in uh, a preventative type mode. So that's all as the case is with all of our videos. Um, if you have any questions, you can post those in the comments. And if you have any ideas for future treatments or concepts you'd like to see in an upcoming trial, you can leave that below and we'll do our best to try to uh, make that happen. Thanks for listening.